Hey what's up guys, my name's Sam, I'm a photographer and filmmaker based here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and recently I put out a Q&A on Instagram which I answered in like a really, it was a really fun video I, I, I posted up and got some really good comments uh, but one of the questions that was asked is that what's in your camera bag and I didn't answer that question because uh, my camera kit really changes depending on the shoot. I shoot weddings, I shoot corporate, uh, I shoot events, I shoot videos so every single, every piece of equipment that I bring really depends on what the job calls for and so what i did was that i posted on a story again would you guys be interested in knowing what i carry in my bag and quite a number of people were interested and when i say quite a number of people i really only mean three <laughs> uh but so i thought it'd be interesting today because i'm actually going out for a street photography session tomorrow uh, I thought as I was packing my bag, I'd talk a little bit about why I choose certain things and once again why I decided for street photography is because my bag always changes and um, I wanted to talk about this first. Uh, but something I want to talk about also is the reasons as to why I choose this specific kind of equipment and how it fits to the kind of style that I shoot. Uh, I think what a lot of people do when they talk about like what's in the camera bag is they talk about the gear uh, but they don't talk about the reasons as to why and even if they do talk about the reasons as to why it's like very generic anything you can answer for example the EOS R oh it has great autofocus uh, but, but why? Why is this camera specific to the use uh, or why is it that you choose this that's so unique out of all the things that you could have chose and how does this piece of gear help you get the kind of images that you like to take not necessarily whether it's good or not uh, so yeah let's just go straight into it I think the first thing obviously we're gonna have to talk about is the bag um, this is the bag that I know oh no it's a bit too big uh, so this is the so I think this is the f-stop Dalston bag if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I really like this bag for street photography. I actually have a ton of bags uh, and I kind of like you rotate between them. Sometimes I use the Peak Design Travel Line. I use a Wonder Provoke as well. But for the most part, if I'm going to be carrying this specific that I'm going to be sharing out this specific set of gear for street photography, I usually carry this bag. And the main thing for it is that it's light. It's, it's really, really light. And if you see the kit that I'm about to be using, uh, it, it sort of helps, it sort of helps with it. It, it almost weighs nothing. Uh, I don't have a full review of it, but if you're interested in it, I would be more than happy to. The only thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't have an external water bottle holder. But other than that, the, the whole bag itself is so light and it carries pretty much everything that uh, I need I, I need for it. I understand like, oh, it, but it's orange, you stick out like a sore thumb or really, it really doesn't matter. And I kind of like the orange because sometimes I meet up with people and it's easy to pick me out from the crowd or look for me if uh, this is if they need to. I, and I really think the orange is a beautiful bag. But yeah, so that's the bag. So that's the bag that I use mainly because it's uh, light. So let's talk about the camera. I usually take one. I usually take one of two cameras. Uh, it's either going to be a toss-up between the EOS R that's shooting me right now, but I've kind of strayed away for it ever since uh, I got the camera that I mostly use for street photography, and that is this. This is the Canon One DX uh, Mark III. If you want a more in-depth review and understanding of why I use the 1DX Mark III for street photography, I have made a video about it. Uh, link is in the description down below. But really quickly, uh, this camera, as much as I understand that it's huge, it's bulky, people tend to notice you. Uh, I hate it when people tell me that. In fact, I've had a bunch of people tell me like, wow, it's so big, it's so noisy. Like, you, you can't be discreet when you're shooting on the streets. And I'll be 100% honest and tell that I don't really care because regardless of whatever camera you use, the philosophy that I have is whatever camera that you use, people are going to notice you unless maybe even if you use your phone, people are going to notice that you're taking a picture. And it's about choosing the gear that, that best fits the style of photos that you like and you shoot. I generally stray towards um, photojournalism, at least I'm trying to practice towards that rather than just the generic street photography that you see on Instagram. Uh, because partially part of my work is that I also take street photos for certain certain clients to be, to use in their reports and things like that. And this camera is what I use because it's abs absolutely reliable. Everything that I I can get, I can get really really good images. And whoever tells you that you can't uh, get candid shots, well, here you go. <laughs> 
So yeah, I use this camera body and I usually carry two batteries. Uh, I usually charge both of them and this one battery usually lasts me an entire day. But sometimes when you're out on assignment, you just want to carry an extra battery just in case uh, something happens. Also, I do want to mention another bag that I carry is actually this is the Moment Sling, whatever you call it. And I'm rocking a very nice, uh, and I'm rocking a very nice road pin right there. Oh, it's so beautiful. So uh, I carry this mainly, I carry it in front because I use public transport a lot and I put my wallet, my power bank, my my cards. So it's all those quick access things that I need that I don't want to put in my bag in case I need to take in and out. But I just have this like right here in front. And sometimes it helps when I'm holding my camera and just like resting it over here so that I don't have to reach up for it when I go all the way. Uh, I don't have to reach for it when it's on the side of my body. So another thing that I use, uh, I don't carry, I don't usually carry a card case, but uh, I normally have two uh, two wise CF Express cards, each 128 gigs because it usually lasts me about like, I, I usually don't even finish up to like 50 gigs a day. So like that's, it's, it's just, uh, it's just a redundant uh, and more memories are uh, really, really good. Um, so for the lenses, the two lenses that I use, this might come come as a shock to some people. The first one, not so much, uh, but this is the 35mm f1.42. Uh, the main reason for this is I love this lens. This lens stays on the camera for the most part. It has an absolutely incredible separation when you're shooting it wide open. It's absolutely tech sharp. The focus is amazing. Uh, I love everything about this lens. I usually keep the lens hood on for this one specifically because it's always the camera's always swinging around my body. And so sometimes I hit, so I just need it like just in case anything happens. The second lens that I use is this. This is the 7, EF 70-200 f2.8 uh, version 3. I know this is like, wait a minute. Why? It's it's a massive lens and why do you use and why do you use this use this for street photography? Uh, and the main reason is just the reach. I am planning to switch this out to 135mm f2 because it's just lighter and uh, complements uh, the 35mm but the 7200 is a very versatile lens. It's extremely sharp, uh, focus is tech sharp, uh, really gets me good images especially if I'm out on assignment. Besides that, I also take uh, a DJI Osmo Action. Uh, if you see some of the POV stuff, this is what I shoot with. And I also use it because sometimes I go to very dodgy areas and I just leave it recording as like a just in case anything happens sort of thing. A few things I'll point out is that I do use different lenses depending on the kinds of shots that I want. Uh, but for the most part, I usually take the 35 and the 70 to 200 because it covers most of my bases and the generic shots that I like. But if I know that I'm going to be going out to shoot cityscapes or specifically wide angle shots, I will bring my 16 to 35 f4. Or if I know I'm going to get a little bit more close up with people, but I don't want the, the wide angle look, I'll probably bring a 50 1.2. Uh, but these two lenses generally stay in my kit uh, for the most part because they are just versatile and it gets me the shots that I want. Other miscellaneous stuff that I bring is I actually bring a small photo book that I print of all my street photos in case anybody kind of, kind of like ask me like, what am I doing? I usually show this, hey, I'm a street photographer and these are the kind of photos that take candid moments of people uh, out on the street. Haven't really needed to use this before, but you never know just in case. Uh, it's just something nice to show people that instead of just showing that your Instagram, uh, it's nice to have like a physical print of the photos that you've taken. And it, they're quite nice to look at as well, especially when they're printed out like, like this. So yeah, that's basically what I bring. It's not really a lot, but it can weigh a lot sometimes and it sometimes hurts when you're shooting for like quite a while. Uh, but now I want to talk about why I use these two lenses and this camera and after months and months or like a lot of time going out and shoot, shooting on, on the streets, I landed on these three in, uh, specifically uh, and how they help me get my shots. I just want to talk about briefly about the 1DX uh, Mark III and the main reason why I choose this this camera to shoot photos on the street is mainly its autofocus system. It is extremely accurate. Uh, it is almost tech sharp and I have mine to case three, which is as soon as the subject enters uh, the scene, it you straight the camera straight away locks onto it and everything is on max, uh, max settings. And because when I, the way I walk around is I walk with the camera like this and when I see something, I straight away shoot. I sometimes bring it up to my eye. Sometimes I'm using live view. 
uh, but the focus on this thing is extremely accurate and I get more keeper shots and that's very very important to me because as as you know street street photography like things happen on the fly and you really have to be as quick as possible as you can and not only do you have to be quick your gear has to be reliable and consistent and that's what this uh, 1DX Mark III is. It's consistent when I go out on the streets. Yes, it will miss some of the times depending on the scene, but 99% of the time, every time I put up this camera to take a photo, it gets me the shot. And that's what, you know, ultimately why people are paying you or why you're going out on the street is you want to get the shots versus it like, of course, yes, I do agree that you should make mistakes at the same time and learn. But when sometimes you're on work, you can't really afford to make mistakes. And that's where getting the, the best camera, at least for me, and the best in autofocus system helps me with that. Is this the right camera for you? For the most part, I don't think so. For most people, I think this camera is way too challenging to shoot, uh, especially when you're starting out, because it can be, I admit, it is intimidating. As much as I say, like, you know, it everybody will notice whatever camera you're using if your camera looks more bigger more professional uh people can be a little bit more apprehensive when you're shooting and it takes a certain level of guts or i want to say stupidity at some points to be shooting with this but if it gets me the shots that's more important to me versus whether people will score me or not uh the next one is the 35 mil 1.4 and how i landed on this is because I, like most people, started out with like a 50mm or a longer focal length. Not at 70 to 200, I think I started out on like an 85. Um, I always found that as I was shooting with longer focal lengths, it always made it feel... The, the, photos, the photos that were coming out always felt very sterile, if you know what I mean. It's like I, I was never really in the scene. Uh, I was always looking at somebody, I was always voyeur, being a voyeur on the streets and that's not something I like. And I found that I learned to, sh I strayed more towards photojournalism. Uh, I strayed more towards wider angle shots that make you get into the scene because it helps you draw yourself as a viewer into the scene. For example, if I was shooting somebody on the street, somebody walking, uh, it's different if I was taking a telephoto lens and going to and, and seeing them as a small person in the frame crossing the street versus if I were to be straight up in almost in the person's face with a wide angle with a wide angle lens. It it speaks differently and that's that's what I like. I I want my images to be able to um, feel like you are actually there versus you spying on the person like it i want to see as if the person is walking right next to you and the only way to get it is going close and with a wide angle lens and that's why i choose the 35 mil specifically and also why the 35 mil is because i find it gives you the most uh it gives me the most natural field of view uh, something like 50 is a bit too tight something like 24 is a bit too artistic a 35 is like a nice blend of naturalism uh at the same time you know it's it's just sharp and it gets me good sep separation and of course the 70 to 200 is more of a specialty lens and why i'm switching out to probably the 135 for street photography is because it's just lighter and i find that i only use telephoto shots when i need close-ups i don't use the telephoto shots to um to catch full bodies of people moving in the streets uh it depends on obviously on the story of the picture i do use it for full body shots sometimes but for the most part i'm using this to really go into the action uh maybe cut close uh cut to like maybe chest level up or maybe a head shot uh things like that it's really to emphasize detail or like isolate the person in the scene and usually uh the images that i get from this are generally what clients prefer uh, they, they, it has this very professional look and it has this very uh, polished, I, I want to say, and all, almost like a very, very extreme separation that clients really, really like, especially the bokeh. Uh, but really, I use this lens to pick out details, uh, essentially, on the street. 
uh, be it like a close up of somebody or uh, maybe a half body shot or something like that something that I need the reach but at the same time I need to isolate the subject even more I really need that person to be the main focus on the on the image and I don't want any distractions that's where the 70 to 200 comes in it's not just about oh I can't physically reach the person it's because I'm utilizing the shot uh, I'm utilizing the lens for a specific look and story uh, that I want to capture uh, in the image. So yeah, I hope this gave you a little bit of insight into why I use specific uh, gear on the street or why I specifically use this gear on the street and hopefully it can help you develop your style and your understanding is to and to find what works for you uh, versus just listening to what other people use and don't understanding why and not understanding why they use the piece of gear. Uh, if you would like to see what's in my camera bag for other kinds of shoots that I go, I would be more than happy to. Uh, I guess just let me know in the comments down below like what what can, what kind of setup you would like me to show you. Uh, but other than that, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you see, uh, do subscribe, and leave a like, leave a comment. It will really, really help out the channel a lot. I'm trying to pursue YouTube a little bit more seriously and any sort of help really goes a long way. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.